Last time on Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. Is that what I'm supposed to find? What? <laughs> what? I'm supposed to be paying attention to his armpit sweat? Gross. Hey guys, right in here, and welcome back to Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. Now, I know I have been gone for a little bit because I was ill for about seven days, and the illness was pretty bad. I was coughing and just... I was an absolute mess, so that's why there haven't been any videos. Now, for those of you who are new, because I know there's quite a lot of you, uh, I do normally post videos on, like, a one to two day basis. Normally two days, but I try to get in as much as possible. And it's not that I'm not excited for either of these series, and I feel especially sorry for you Ace Attorney guys, because you guys have been waiting forever, but I just, I happened to start a new series, and then I got rather ill, so I couldn't get back to this, and I'm still, I, I feel fine, but I'm still a little sick, so I might sound off. And I'm gonna try to, uh, kinda edit out every cough or sniffle or whatever I have to do. I just realized I had the wrong save loaded, so I had to reload it. So yeah, that's why we switched to this screen all of a sudden. And yeah, once again, since my voice is odd, doing some of these character voices is not gonna sound like it normally does. Especially Trucy. Okay. So where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? Well, Drew Misham, who was killed, wasn't Drew Misham the forger, basically. Huh? Well, then, who was he? Well, he was actually... Oh, God, she has the weird hand thing again. Doing her nails. <laughs> so, you really made those forgeries? Oh, she's gonna sketch something out again, isn't she? Yes. For father. Uh, what is that supposed to be? I- I can't tell. It looks like a badly drawn logo. I know I was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? My father was a painter. Oh, I, I like her theme, actually. I'm not sure this is specifically her theme or not, but I like it. I love painting ever since I was a child. One day, father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent? For making forgeries? How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials, I could make anything. Oh wow, that's quite the talent. Anything? Father was so proud, and I was so happy. Uh, I, I, what is this supposed to be? It looks like a vase or a palm tree on an island and there's someone being hung or something? I can't tell what that is. But in the end, I was making those. Ah, uh, so... She didn't... He didn't tell her what she was actually making. Forgeries. I've never had a good constitution nor personality. I know very little of the world outside my door. Now because of me, father is... Do you know about this red envelope? I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So you were already, um... A filthy forger criminal, were you? Apollo, that's not very nice. You were already creating your works back then. <laughs> I, I love how kind Apollo is. He tries to step around subjects. I started when I was only 12 years old. So the one who figured out the stamp was poisoned, that was... Mr. Justice, it's time to the courtroom, please. The judge is getting really angry and doing that thing he does. Oh shit, okay. Oh right, I'm out of time, sorry. Wait, Vera, just one more thing, please. Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right, see? We checked them out and we saw what was underneath. We saw the rough sketches underneath the three finished paintings. So, what does that mean? I see. Mr. Justice. Yes? Father, he knew of you. Yeah, somehow. Both of you. You're late, Father? Still can't get over how silly he looks. At first, I thought it was a graphical error, but if he's a painter, it makes sense that he has paint all over him. He was watching, gathering information. 
all about the Renton Company law offices. But lately, we're not doing just law. <laughs> yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse, and play piano. Well, they're not really gags. Yet when father heard you had resumed the legal business... How pleased he was. Who was Mr. Misham? Yeah, we should probably ask Phoenix about this man. Although he's probably doing his normal bullshit, like always, where he's like, Oh, I won't tell you anything. How, how am I supposed to know? What if he was daddy's daddy? <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's how that works, Trucy. Judging from the relative ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. Things are already confusing enough with all these daddies running around. We know that the victim's daughter, Vera, was the forger. What does this mean for the case? Guess we're about to find out. Yeah, I'm really interested in which direction this is gonna go. Because from what you guys told me, there's a lot more trial areas than there are investigations. I don't even know if there's an investigation left. I'm still trying to see how this is going to link back to seven years ago, but it's out of sight. The court is now back in session. Oh, she's biting her nails. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Perhaps you could begin by telling us how it all worked? How did you set up this Drew Misham Forger persona? <laughs> How did you summon a persona the first time? Chill- okay, chill out, lady. There's that stare again. She's drilling more holes into his head. I know it's hard for you, but hey, he's a handsome guy. What's hard? <laughs> Very well, miss, if you would. And stop staring at my clavier. Did you really just- wait, did you really make those detestable forgeries? Oh, she's- she's distressed. Perhaps you'd rather answer my question. Were you the one who painted that painting a remarkably similar one? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. She- she looks happy. I painted it, yes, and I was so happy to do the crime. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, he was the one who made the forgeries? Yet she did not wish to reveal the truth of their operation. So the victim was a stand-in, a decoy. To the world at large, he was the forger, not her. I've done a bad thing. I have, haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this. You have seen this before, yeah? Y yes It was in the desk drawer. Very well, you may proceed with your testimony. Things are going pretty civilly around here for once. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. Witness testimony. I created things and father sold them. This envelope came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Father handled the deal. All of it. Scribble, scribble. I received the stamp. Oh, cool, stamp. That was in that envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Hmm. There certainly was much of great interest in your testimony. Not that the witness realizes it. Very well, please begin the cross-examination. Right, okay. I need more information about this forger. This Drew Misham. Miss Ham, Misham. The red envelope. I created things of Father Salt. I know what you did, you filthy criminal. <laughs> Press, I guess? I haven't... Uh, it's gonna be so hard for me to present evidence in this case, because I haven't played this game in like a week, and normally I do it on like a bi-daily basis almost. Let's just press everything and see where we can go with this. So these things you were making are... You mean paintings identical to other paintings, right? The closer they were, the happier father was. The happier I was. 
Aw, I was happy too. Still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting sold when I was 12. Your Honor? I had, she had no idea what she was doing was illegal. Easy there, little attorney. You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. Oh, uh, true. Please tell us more about this envelope. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. All right. It must it must really be hard for her. I normally don't go into this, but it must really be difficult for her. Just like losing her dad in such a way, and then just after being sheltered for all that time and having him be like your only friend, it appears, and having him have you do illegal work too. That's not good. By other than a painting, you mean? You'd only done paintings up to that point. Yes. But Father had a realization. He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance? For instance, a letter someone had written. Or a fingerprint left upon a cup. Or a signature on a document to seal upon a letter. You know what this is all ticking back to in my head? This is all ticking back to uh, Mr. Wright and all this fake evidence stuff he's been talking about for the past few cases. I have a feeling he's related to the case seven years ago or so. She said she started making things when she was 12. I, I don't know her current age. What is her current age? Court record. Profiles. How old are you? You're 19. Uh, no, it wouldn't have been her, because she, she started making stuff when she was 12. No, wait, that's the right age. Math failing me here. But yeah, uh, if the case happened seven years ago, the first thing he would have had her made is when she was 12, so. Huh, interesting little thing there. Or a signature upon a document, a seal upon a letter. None of this makes, wait, none of this makes her sound very innocent at all. And the $100,000 promised in this letter was the start. The beginning of a new industry for Drew Misham. A new industry? The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Forging evidence, in other words. Uh-oh. Father handed the... Father handed the deal... Handled the deal, all of it. My voice is starting to come back, I can feel it. So you didn't know how the things you were making were being used. Scribble, scribble, scribble. I enjoy painting very much. Aw. I think I understand. The Fraulein has lived in an unusual little world. Can you tell us what happened to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. Um, did he follow the instructions? Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp. This is a rather important matter. Give your answer some thought. <laughs> we haven't found out... What? Oh, whoa, this is weird. Oh, okay, because she has to do her talking animation first, which is writing. You received the stamp in that envelope. What do you mean, you received it? Did I do something wrong? Y you didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back, atrocrinine. A moment, sir, forehead. You're being rather brash. Or I guess say rash, brash? What the hell is that? Um, you can't force an answer upon the witness. Now then, perhaps you would tell me, Fraulein Vera, why did you receive this stamp? something wrong it was beautiful <laughs> oh you mean it was one of those commemorative stamps oh so that's why she framed it no one knew about the poison yes I think it was so you didn't know about the poison I 
<laughs> Sad face. No, I guess not. So the trap failed by chance, by mistake. Thanks to this commemorative stamp. Oh, uh, quite the close call. It's a little difficult to do the judge voice too, I have to admit. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. I feel like this is the fact that I have to contest. You mean you, you're, wait, you mean you moved to where the current S Drew studio is? Yes. We saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. <laughs> this single job had tied them to the criminal underworld. To think Mr. Misham wished to reduce their visibility in the world at large. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father posed as the creator of the work. So that was the real essence of the artist Drew Misham. You did the work and he supplied the face. So, you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Still don't know what that shit is you're drawing. Apparently not. Wait, can everyone seriously decipher that? I, what is that supposed to be? About this commemorative stamp. Could you tell us more about it? It was very pretty, and more than that. Yes? It was a picture of people I liked at the time. People you liked at the time? This is something new. No, 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 no. <laughs> Clavia, you better learn some new riffs, goddammit. Just working your scales doesn't do anything. Learn some arpeggios, piece of shit. Just kidding, I love you, Clavi. Stop breaking my wall. Apparently, we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. If you would be so kind as to continue your testimony, Fraulein. <laughs> okay. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magician, so I kept it. Was it? We Don't we have the stamp as evidence? No, we just have the frame. We don't have the stamp. Oddly enough. No, it's on the envelope, isn't it? No, it would allow you to look at it if it was on the envelope. From the Graham Rye envelope, maybe? Sorry if I'm just blanking on this completely. This is what happens when you have to leave for a while, then you're expected to remember things. I don't know what to present here, honestly. It's a little off to me. It's a little odd. Uh, because I know what the problem is. I feel like the problem is this fact that's saying that the Graham Rye musicians are on the stamp. But the thing is, I don't know what piece of evidence uh, I can look at or present that shows differently. Is it because she liked the Graham Rye troupe so much? That's why she put it in the frame? And that's why the murder didn't happen for so long? Is that what we're supposed to get out of this? Isn't that kind of obvious? I guess I still have to present it. Uh, magic show take it or the Graham Rye envelope? I think the take it has a picture of them on it. So that's probably more likely. Does it? It's the only thing I can think of. Okay, that had to be one of the stupidest proper evidences or proper pieces of evidence I have ever seen. I, I don't understand what the line of logic there is for presenting that. I happen to get it right, but... Okay. I guess the envelope probably would have worked too. I was originally thinking about doing the envelope, but... I didn't. I guess I got really lucky on this one also. Those magicians you liked, was it... What, was it this bunch? Oh, she's gonna flip out and see. She's like, yeah! Yo, no, she's just gonna draw. Apollo, they're not a bunch. <laughs> oh, I see. Still, I have to wonder. Why include a commemorative stamp like that in a business letter? Good question. Well, pretty stamps are always better, and you can't beat Troop Graham, right? But the whole murder plan was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think? Prosecutor Gavin. Prosecutor Gav- Oh, yeah, you're all sweaty and hot. Prosecutor Gavin? 
Gavi, what what's happening over there? Did I turn the AC up? Grim, 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 Rye. Oh no, he's... Is he triggered in some way? What's with Gavin? Might I ask just one question of this witness? Oh, what's up with you, dude? Chill out. Just... They just do dumb magic tricks, like Trucy. Hey, my magic tricks are- Yeah, shut up, Trucy. In your testimony just now, you stated... This was your first work that was other than a painting? Please tell me... What exactly did you make? Can I ask what- Oh, no. No, answer the question. Now. Come on, dude, chill. Pr Prosecutor Gavin, what happened to you? you you're so cool, but you're usually not one of the one whom's volume concerns me. Usually, it's Phoenix or Paulo screeching in the hallway like a goddamn Velociraptor. Yes, it's unbecoming of me. I apologize, but I must know. Please, Miss Misham, tell me. It was a book. A single page in a book. A book? Please be more specific. It was a handwritten book. L like like a, dare a diary, not dairy. Oh, this has to... No, no, no. I don't know. What? What's going on here? What's up, Clavier? What, what, what's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks like he just saw a ghost. M Miss Misham, this book. Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover? Yes or no? H how, how did you know? Prosecutor Gavin, the defendant is answering all of your questions. Stop badgering her. He's told you nothing, has he? Oh, you mean Phoenix? Yeah, he doesn't really tell me shit. You're soiled. Sullied meant her nothing. Sullied who? Phoenix Wright, who else? Daddy? He never told you about the trial seven years ago. About how he came to lose his attorney's badge. It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back it bore the mark of a silk hat. What? Phoenix Wright tossed out of the profession by false evidence. And the forger who made that evidence... Is this girl standing right in front of me? Vera, you must tell us. The evidence you made was used in a trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Misham to forge the evidence? For all her sakes, who was it? Judge, don't stop this. Please don't stop this. We only met once. You... You met the client? Well, who was it? It was... It was... Oh... Uh, I'm gonna take a guess at who she's gonna say. Uh, I have two reasons for saying this. One, because I don't believe it could be the end of Clavier's brother in any way, seeing as how, or how interesting he was and they introduced him in the first case. But I'm gonna say it's gonna be uh, Clavier's brother how am I forgetting his name again? Kristoff. Yeah, Kristoff uh, Gavin. It's gonna be Kristoff because she's been glaring at Clavier the whole time like he looks familiar or something. And it's because of Kristoff, I bet, isn't it? What's going on with Vera? She's staring at a prosecutor Gavin's face again. Yes, what? Is there something about me? I know my body is hot, but hey... I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book, the diary. Who was it? Uh, ah. 
V Vera. She's just gonna die. The... De... Vol. The devil? What? Wait, what? I, I sneezed. I didn't get to see. What the hell was that? Did, did she just die from atronine poisoning? I had to sneeze and I looked back up. And what? Okay, so if that said she died from atrocrinine poisoning, what? This ends the recording of the trial for the murder of Drew Misham. Uh, what? <coughs> I'm speechless. Literally, I have no clue what's going on right now. Vera Misham was, during the trial, poisoned by an unknown assailant. Silent. The dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defendant's life. Oh, thank God. She is currently in intensive care, not to be disturbed for any reason. A very simple case, at first glance. Until it finally began to show its true colors. The long road to the truth takes us to the record of an- I feel like it should have the Soul Calibur narrator. The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. Oh, hey, it's me! And I'm not a douchebag! In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. <laughs> Hi, uh, I I'm Gabe Cowboy Clavier, nice to meet you. And that is where we must go. Oh, no. Oh, look, it's baby Trucy! Or child Trucy, she's so adorable. To find the whole truth. To be continued? No, I want it now. Actually, there's still lots of time in this episode, so we're gonna get it now. Oh my goodness, I'm so hyped. Some of you guys were worried because I was gone so long. You're like, are you bored of the games you're playing? Are you not gonna finish them? And no, I goddamn love Ace Attorney, and I love Radiant Dawn, and the next two series that are coming up, I'm even more excited about. So, just saying. Just saying. I'm not bored of it and what? Didn't we just... We just did this, though. I, I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I played for a long time. And only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. What? What? Sorry, I, I want to read this. I'm just kind of trying to gaze at the scene and trying to think about something right now. Is it saying that Phoenix was framed for killing this guy, uh, Trucy's dad? So, oh, we actually get to go back to seven years ago. No way. That's awesome. Yes! So excited. I haven't gotten to voice Phoenix in forever, but I don't know how to make his voice different from Apollo's. It's probably just giving you my normal voice anyway, because he's the only one in the other games. The only other voice I could think of giving out to anyone different is Edgeworth, because he'd definitely have a different voice. Ooh, okay. It's been a long time since I've felt like such a rookie. Got to try and relax. Oh, good morning, Mr. Enigmar. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your pre previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. I understand I am asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trust me. Oh, look, it's tiny child, Trucy. Oh, morning, Daddy. Oh, I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you? Ha 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 ha. I am always fine, as always. This old boy here is to help me after all. That's young man to you. Good morning. 
That's a cute Wait, no. I thought that was Trucy saying good morning. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What the heck is she talking about? Oh, old boy. Huh, me? Look what she started. <laughs> um, uh, here. What is this? It seems fate's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than... 10 swift minutes remain. To all those who have supported me in my life's work, I give thanks. Farewell. Magnifici Gramry. Or Magnifi. I don't know, I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. What's this? A memo for you or s some such? Huh. Not from the looks of it. What is this? Looks like a page from someone's diary. Oh, the forged evidence, isn't it? I'll give it a read later. Well, how do you feel about the trial today? We'll get through it somehow, as, as we always do. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy I hear. Ah, oh, an easy win then, yes? They're calling him a true through... Wait, through bread in the history of the prosecutor's office. <clears throat> of course, there's one of those every year. The switching of attorneys just before a trial. I know it's a difficult situation I put you in. But... But allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yes? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best, do not worry. Wait, do, so do your best, but do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me a pep speech. I'll do what I can. Oh, 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 oh. I see you do not understand. You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. I impossible? Yes. Isn't that right, Trucy? Yep, you bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday. And the information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still, I'll do what I can, for their sake. I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I am in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. My client is Shady Enigmar. Is that supposed to mean, like, Shady Enigma? Is that what that's supposed to be? Known to the world as Zach Gramry. A wildly popular mu musician, or magician, star of the troupe Gramry. His mentor, Magnifi Gramry, was a rare breed of magician. He single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. And Zach Gramry is a suspect. April 19th, 10 a.m. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Shady Enigma. Oh, it feels so good to be back with Phoenix. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, no. Is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking, is this what all the fuss is about? Bit of a buzzkill, really. Buzzkill? Is this some new kind of crime? <laughs> one of the worst. This tr it's this- tr this is a trial, yeah? Where are the sweaty palms, the pounding hearts? A Gavineer's concert got ten times the thrill this gig's got. Who- who are you again? Who let him in the building? Is he even- whatever. Clavier. Clavier Gavin. I came. <laughs> to get the party started. Legally, huh? G Gavin? Defense attorney? Christoph Gavins? Ah, uh, figures my bro's more famous in this part of town. Clavier Gavin. Lead singer from the mega hit band The Gavineers. You're out of your league, rock boy. I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. True, my debut single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this, yeah? Really? It seems to be more like your life compared to being a lawyer or a prosecutor. Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected Euro rock accent, by the way. I'm just getting warmed up. Our attorney, Phoenix Wright. 
Perhaps you'd be so kind to fill us in on the, oh wait, on the cause? Or the case? Octum, baby. Time to call on the opening act. What was his name again? Oh uh, yes, Detective Gum- Oh, Gumchu's here, yes! Detective Gumchu, hit it. Oh, I missed you too, buddy. I missed you. And you are? Hey, you were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumchu. I'm a homicide detective down at the president. Press, press in, press in. Press it, Gumshoe, shut up. Detective Gumshoe, long time no see. Hey, you. Uh, huh, me? Today's the day, pal. The day I win and you lose. I I'm not even sure. This whole time I was thinking I gave him, like, the Sid voice. Like, the Southerner voice, but I don't even... I don't know what kind of voice to give Gumshoe. He has such a weird... Demeanor, I I would say. Uh, I'll just figure it out as I go. I got confidence in my testimony today. See, what you normally lack confidence in your testimony. No detective, this is my stage. Can the antics? Huh? All this hey you wing and such. And I could care less about your history together. Uh huh. Wow. Old Clavier is a super douche. Very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would. Please tell us about the case at hand. It happened six days back in the hospital. Wait, in a room at the general hospital. Oh, Jesus. That's something. The facts are as simple as they come. Here's the crime scene. The victim was a patient asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and bam, lights out. Them's the facts. I don't know what kind of fits him. I, I just don't know. I Every time I look at him, I can't... Even in my head, I don't know what kind of voice he should have. It's so weird. Oh! Not so long ago, the victim, Magnifi Gramry, was a famous man. He had the entire country under his magical spell as it were. And Peter was getting quite upset with him. Oh yes, the great magician. He retired years ago, though. Say the name Magnifi to one of my generation and you'd be lucky to get a blank stare. Yes, though I'm sure the youngsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say Troop Gramry has made quite the name for themselves. Anyhow, the retired Magnifi's been- or the, the retired Magnifi's been in the hospital for last year. Huh, what was it? A mall ignorant tutor or something? Doing something to his liver, I think? Yeah. A malignant tumor. A malignant tumor, perhaps. In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months to live, in fact. Sorry if I'm just, like, stuttering a bit right now. I, I'm trying to hold back a sneeze. Trust me. Ugh. The facts do seem simple enough. But something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door? Why shoot him? I wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Why make the effort to commit a murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin. When he was shot with a pistol, the syringe was found at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Small syringe added to the court record. Oh, huh. I believe the question before us is clear then. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? What reason could he have had? Very well, detective. Perhaps you could enlighten us as to the circumstances of the shooting. Y y yes sir. Actually, the victim kinda ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering for his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. 
and the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. Huh, okay, well, this is its setup. But what? You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts I have here in the letter in question. To my beloved student, Zach. To, to, what, what? Clavier, put that back up, I didn't get to read it. Okay. <laughs> Very unusual indeed. Although such a thing, although could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder. I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Ah, oh, you cannot refuse and we both know the reason why. Detective Gumshoe, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about, about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Oh, I haven't gotten seen Phoenix slap that paper in a long time. <laughs> Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 11.05 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details, Air Attorney. Well, was there some reason? As it turns out, there was every night for a half hour starting at 11. The victim Magnifi Gramry was given an IV. An IV. There it is in the picture off to the side of the bed. At 11 o'clock, a doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. This happened every night without fail. So that was the only time they could meet without the chance of an untimely interruption during his IV. Very well. Shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination if you would. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me. The circumstances. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. Just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead after all, just as he had commanded. It could be a setup. But let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Thanks, pal. You really, you know, you really advanced after all these years. Shut up, Gumshoe. Fine. I'll, I can play it as slow as well. Wait, I can play it slow as well as I can play it fast. That's... That's the attitude. I'm just gonna give you a tip, musicians. This is super obvious, and people ignore it because they're young and stupid. But practice with a metronome and start slow and go faster. That's what he's referencing to. Uh, it really does help. Even if you have some weird mindset of, if I can play it faster, then I can play it slower. Uh, well, no, that basically just means if you can play it sloppy faster, then you can play it sloppy slower. Random advice. Doesn't have anything to do with anything. Whatever. On the testimony. On with the testimony, Detective Gumshoe. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. Did he? Did he really? And this letter was sent by the victim. There it is, gotcha. You're all mine this time, pal. Huh? I had the handwriting checked out, of course. It's the victim's, no mistake. Or a forgery. Cough, cough. I see. Ha 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 ha! Score one for the boys! <laughs> Your boy Gumshoe here! I didn't lose, I was just ascertaining facts. <laughs> so why am I so annoyed? <laughs> but a letter ordering for your own death? Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. We used to just shoot ourselves in the face! I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace, even now, your honor. <laughs> so anyways, guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. The defendant did what was asked of him, and shot the old man in the forehead. Uh... Okay, I, I want to look at our evidence real quick before I continue pressing Gumshoe over here. Magnifi's letter. Letter asking Zack to shoot him. Touch button, touch check button for details. Used for administering, administering insulin shots. Has been washed and shows no sign of use. That's good. 
Magnifi's chart. Diagnosed with a malignant tumor given three months. Touch check. Malignant tumor in liver has progressed to final stage with no hope of recovery. Patient has three months to live. Patient has chronic diabetes required regular insulin. All right. What is this? Oh, it's the crime photo. I don't know what's that creepy clown in the corner. There's a bullet hole through its head, though. And that would have to mean something. That would have to mean either he's holding the clown in front of him, or he was looking to his right when he got shot and it penetrated them both. Or there was two bullets fired. Uh, there's the gun, which oddly enough looks like a hand cannon? Or a flintlock pistol, I should say, instead of a hand cannon to be proper. <laughs> That's kind of an odd thing to kill someone with. I want you to shoot me with a hand cannon! Or a flintlock pistol. I don't know why I said hand cannon so many times. Alright, that's about all I see. Uh, something weird might be in his insulin thing, seeing as how the bag is green. <laughs> Doesn't sound right. Autopsy report. Cause of death, single gunshot to the head, estimated time of death. Okay. Notebook page. Mysterious paper received just before. Okay. Yeah, alright, we already read this. Alright, keep talking, gumshoe. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people who do your thinking for you, pal. Learn to think for yourself, get that noggin cranking. <laughs> you fail to grasp the concept of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says, shoot in the forehead, loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. You fail to grasp the concept of shooting people is bad, detective. We also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows that it had been fired recently. Well, Mr. Wright? As far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. The photo. Maybe there's something in there I can use. So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in this prosecution's argument. Shot something else. Yeah, it's a clown. That's pretty obvious. Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does this letter tell us? The defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse. His teacher wishes. Wait, the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Bingo, pal. That's why the defendant popped him one in the forehead. Oh, the defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. Wait, what? And you can prove that with this photo? I can prove he had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered. But he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. If he didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what did the defendant shoot? He shot the clown doll. The clown doll face. The clown doll! Take a closer look, see? It's been shot in the forehead, too. Oh! There is a hole in its forehead. Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim. Oh no, Clavier, what are you doing? Huh, and I suppose you you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown doll? He didn't just shoot the clown doll, he shot the doll's forehead. His forehead? Ah, oh, her forehead! <laughs> Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead. The defense has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead. It definitely looks like it was shot. Bailiff sent someone to investigate this matter. Oh, I admit I'm impressed, but I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. 
Perhaps he did have to shoot a forehead as ordered. But the letter says nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow- Wait, this is the- This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Er, the bullet hole in the clown doll's forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue, yet Prosecutor Gavin's right. Um, it, it alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. You cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim. So sorry, Mr. Wright, how sad it is to see the mighty fall. Cla Clavier, you're still not exactly in the winning position right now. I mean, to be fair, the prosecution always starts in a winning position, but... Still. How sad it is to see the novice's overconfidence. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into account as you... It's so nice seeing Phoenix so confident of himself and so ready to go as an expert attorney. It's, it's awesome instead of seeing him freak out in front of every single prosecutor in front of him. Please take this, in, this newfound evidence, blah, 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 put it in testimony. So what if he shot the clown? He still shot the victim, pal. Did he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> so, I don't know what that's supposed to signify. It still doesn't really resonate with any of our evidence. Seems fate's clock will make blah blah blah. Ten minutes remain. To all those supporting me in my life's work. Okay, yeah, I found the contradiction. Uh, it says here, I will ready a gun which will shoot one shot square in the forehead. It's, like, it's... It's a freaking flintlock pistol. Flintlock pistols, for the most part, only have one shot that you can fire at a time. So, it's kind of how they work. That's the thing, but I just said... What? That's a contradiction right there. There's only one bullet in the gut, but... But I... What? <laughs> I am so confused by that. That is a legitimate claim. I guess he's just gonna blow up our health bar again, then. Uh, I'm not sure I follow you. No, it makes perfect sense, Judge. Listen to me, that's a flintlock I I don't know what a flintlock pistol is. It, er it clearly er contradicts the evidence. Oh shit, I look stupid in front of him now, don't I? You don't sound very sure, Mr. Wright. Objection overruled. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. So what if he shot the clown? He still shot the victim, pal. Alright, let's press him a bit more on that, because I don't... I, that's the right piece of evidence. I, I swear that's the right piece of evidence. There's nothing else in here that... Or not this one, but it would be... The other one, unless I accidentally... Uh, presented the wrong piece of evidence... Last time, which I have done before. I have accidentally switched around... A piece of evidence that looked similar before. Alright, let's just press him on this, I guess, then. You mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? That's the one! It's a funny looking gun, so there's no mistake in it. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun. The rifling- Of course they match! It's a freaking flintlock pistol! It's not going to f- <laughs> It's gonna fire little balls of steel or iron, I actually don't know what those are made out of. But still, come on. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. So you verified the murder weapon in other words. You bet we did. Sorry, I'm just stifled at some of the weird things the game's assuming I don't know. The pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. Well, how did he get a gun then in Japerica? It's really hard to get one apparently. Why are you so certain? What a pile of sand has your head st been stuck in all this time, pal? You never heard of Zack and Valance quick draw shoot him? Huh, what's that? One of the defendant's specialties. Zack and Valance stand on either side of a girl, then they shoot. But the bullets don't hit her. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This is one of the pistols they use in their show. Got a great design, huh? The kids love it. 
Many boys and girls join the police just because of that pistol I hear. You know, that would explain a lot about the police force. <laughs> Troop Grimra stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held onto that pistol ever since. The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here she is. Another gun to add to my gun drawer. Awesome. <laughs> I just like to imagine that below the podium, the, the uh, judge has like an armory down there. <laughs> well, this is this truly is a blast from the past. It's a strange pistol for magic shows, see? But it can fire real bullets. Huh. Looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. Yes, everybody, everyone knows that, Gumshoe. By the way, the pistol firing chamber is empty. Of course it is. And it shows traces of having been fired recently. So were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. We might say that a lack of fingerprints is in fact a fingerprint of its own. Aha, uh -huh, intriguing point, well made. Whoa, 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 not well made, not intriguing. In any case, the court accepts this evidence. My grandchild will get a kick out of seeing this. And now it's time to return to our testimony. So he shot the clown, he still shot the victim, pal. So does it want me to present the gun, not the piece of paper, to say, Hey, he can only fire one bullet and there's two bullet holes. Oh god, it's being weird again. Have to manually present. There we go. God. <laughs> it, it's, it's so weird, because I should be rewarded for figuring out a case early. But it's just assuming I don't know how any of this works. The cheap, the trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Y yeah But like I just said, pal. After he shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... Oh god, you're dumb, gumshoe. Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. The murder weapon? How? Are you you two judge, really? It's quite simple, your honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Ah! If he had shot the clown in the forehead, he couldn't have shot the victim, too. Yeah! Th that's not a contradiction, not even close. All he had to do was reload the pistol after the first shot. Oh, where did he get the extra bullet? They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one already, then prove to us how he got it. <laughs> I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party is just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet beyond my good looks and startling good record sales. An utter lack of humility. Oh, wh what's this? Seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, our detective was just a warm-up act. Oh, that's, that's kind of mean, you know. <laughs> now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Uh, you know we're the only people in the courtroom, right? Like, nobody else is here or matters. Ready for what? For my decisive witness, of course. A witness who you will find can prove one thing for us. That it was Zack Gramry who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15 minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll, ne I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zack. Court is adjourned. Okay, so I'm gonna end this episode here. Uh, sorry if I sounded a little sickly once again or stuttered quite a bit. Uh, I'm not feeling bad in any way, but it's, I'm still a little, like, you know, sick. <laughs> but anyways, if you enjoyed the episode, I am loving this case, although it was a little frustrating there that I figured out basically what happened. 
just at looking at the picture. And everyone was like, oh, what? No, you don't know what you're talking about. What? You mean that fires a single bullet? No way. <laughs> like, it was just... It's a little odd. I'm not sure if it would have been different for a Japanese audience that... Uh, probably be less knowledgeable about guns. I'm sorry if that's, like, ignorant in any way and to assume that. But for a lot of people, just looking at that shows, like, hey... That can only hold one bullet. And then you just kind of figure out really quickly. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It helps out a lot. And if you want to become a member of the Dust Brigade, just subscribe. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Right now.